a very good morning to all the student of class 6 dear student today we will study the 11th chapter of social science named as conqueror from distant land and spread of buddhism in central asia so dear student this chapter we will study from the book our land our world so very first you should know what are the significant term of this chapter सबसे पहले हम इसमें क्या पढ़ेंगे कि कौन से इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स या कौन से इम्पोर्टेंट टर्म्स इस चैप्टर में इम्पोर्टेंट है सबसे पहले यवंस यवंस क्या थे द ग्रीक्स वर्ल्ड नोन एज यवंस इन इंडियन लिटरेचर जो ग्रीक्स थे ठीक है उनको हम इंडियन लिटरेचर में क्या बोलते हैं यवंस के नाम से जानते हैं बौद्धिस्तवा क्या थी बुद्धास इन हिज प्रीवियस वर्ड इज कॉल्ड बुद्धिस्तव ओके सो दीज आर दी सिग्निफिकेंट टर्म्स ऑफ चैप्टर नेक्स्ट इज क्षत्रपास विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ गवर्नर सो डियर स्टूडेंट वेरी फर्स्ट यू यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड द जो हमारे डिस्टेंट लैंड से नॉर्थ वेस्ट में विजेता थे उसके बारे में हम लोग पढ़ेंगे ठीक है सो वेरी फर्स्ट सबसे पहले हम लोग पढ़ते हैं व्हेन द रूलर रूरल्स ऑफ मगध वर एक्सटेंडिंग देयर डोमिनेंस इन इंडिया जब मगध के लोग ठीक है इंडिया में अपने अपना आधिपत्य जमाने की कोशिश कर रहे थे द किंग्स ऑफ फर्स Paris were also building up their power. Cyrus, founder of Persian Empire, had extended his conquest right up to the Hindu Kush, and Gandhar formed a part of his empire. Okay, and Indus River in. Five one six, I mean, five hundred sixteen or seventeen BC, and annexed a portion of Punjab. The Farsian uh, conquest established contact between India and the people of Fars. So this proved the beneficial to both countries, and there began commercial and कल्चरल एक्सचेंज तो इससे क्या हुआ पारसियों के बीच में और इंडियंस के बीच में क्या हुआ एक कॉमर्शियल ट्रेड हुआ एक कल्चरल कल्चरल चीजें एक्सचेंज होने लगी ठीक है और क्या हुआ दोनों कंट्रीज ने आपस में कॉमर्शियल एंड कल्चरल एक्सचेंज शुरू किया सो दिस दिस इंटरचेंज ऑफ सोशल एंड पॉलिटिकल आइडियाज बिटवीन टू कंट्रीज और इससे क्या हुआ पॉलिटिकल आइडियाज भी एक्सचेंज हुए एंड द ग्रोथ ऑफ एम्पायर इन फारस गेव बर्थ टू द कंसेप्शन ऑफ यूनिफिकेशन ऑफ नॉर्दर्न इंडिया तो इससे क्या हुआ एक यूनिफिकेशन कंसेप्शन कहां पे नॉर्थ इंडिया में शुरू हुआ अंडर द शिशुनाग एंड द मौर्य शिशुनाग और मौर्य के अंदर सो द मॉर्य आर्ट बियर्स एंड अन Denable stamp of Persian art. Let's move ahead to understand more. Alexander, after conquering the whole Greece, um, subjected Pharsia's Asia Minor, Egypt, and then turned into India in three twenty six BC. The rural of Takshila readily yielded, but Porus, the rural of Uh, the porous the rural of adjoining kingdom resists in his advance mauryan period jo kaun sa time tha mauryan period ka 200 bc se 300 ad ka usko kis ke naam se jana jata hai period of empire ke naam se jana jata hai theek hai so on fall of maurya uh, maurya's india lost her political unity and once again several petty state uh, arose in india After killing the last Maurya king, Vrihadarta, his commander-in-chief Pushyamitra Singh, ascended the throne of Magadhi. He strengthened and revitalized the military system of Magad Empire. He continued the policy of conquest and 
expansion. So during the Sunga rule, Manendra, the Greek ruler of Kabul and Punjab, invaded northern India about 155 BC. The governor V. Dribha too revolted. So Pushyamitra celebrated his victory by performing Ashwamega Yagya and assumed the title of Maharaja Dhiraj. He, his successor too were great pattern and art literature. They ruled up 73 BC. They were replaced Kanavas. So the Kanavas, the Kanva rule was short-lived and replaced the Sata Vahanas. So, the Kanavas ka time tha, wo konsa time tha? Short-lived time tha, chike? 73 BC se 28 BC tha, chike? Let's understand the Indo-Greek or the Bacterian Greeks. Hum kis ko samajhte Indo-Greeks ko and Bacterian Greeks ko. So, the Indo-Greeks or Bacterian were the Dissidents of the Greek generals who ruled over the Pacteria and Parthia, who is modern Parthia. So, among the Greek rulers, Menendra Heliculus were notable. Menendra was the most powerful Greek. Most powerful Greek. King. Greeks ka jo sabse zada powerful king tha, wo koon sa tha? Manindra tha. He also known as Milind. Usse hum kis naam se jaante hain? Usse hum Milind ke naam se bhi jana jata hai. He conquered the Indian terrorists up to uh, Katiawar and Burj. He empire stretched from Afghanistan to Mathura. He embarrassed Buddhism too. So let's understand how Greek influenced India. Greeks ne India mein kaisa apna, kaise apna influence badaya tha. Let's understand it, which is very important part of this chapter and important learning objective of the chapter. The Greeks uh, termed as Yavans in Indian literature. Jo Greeks the Indian literature mein usse hum Yavans ke naam se jante hai, were a highly cultured people. Jo bodhi cultured people the they left their influence on Indian life and society in many ways, especially in the field of astronomy, coinage, and sculpture. Okay. So, the Greek were, in fact, the originator of the Gandhar school of art. Indo Greek, Greek kings worshipped Lord Vishnu. Their stay in India brought about healthy exchange of knowledge and ideas between Greeks and Indians. So, when in their presence, they were Indian or Greeks ke beech mein ek healthy knowledge exchange at that time. Pe, so, the Greek influence, uh, influence on Indian culture and society may be elaborate as under coins. Coins kaise the? The Indian learned from the Greeks to use molds and dyes of their coins. Astronomy kaise the? Astronomy compared their knowledge and Greek astronomer and enhanced their knowledge of stars which they used for forecasting. They even adopted the Greek calendars. Astronomy mein eh, kafi zada Indians ne adopt kiya Greeks ka calendar adopt kiya, medicine. So, uh, the Greek physician and surgeon were held in high esteem during the first century AD. The Yunani system of medicine is, is still prevalent in India. Matla, jo medicine thi, jo Yunani medicine ka culture aya, wo kaha se aya, Greek se aya, jo aaj bhi India mein bohat zada famous hai, warfare. The Greeks were considered excellent engineers of the warfare. The Greeks were engineers in warfare. They were very excellent in art and culture. They were very good at The Gandhar school of art was the result of the Greek influence on Indian art. 
लिटरेचर कैसा था इट इज सेट दैट संस्कृत ड्रामास वर लार्जली इंफ्लुएंस बाय द ग्रीक प्लेस ग्रीक प्लेस में सबसे ज्यादा संस्कृत का ही यूज किया गया है लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द साकास साकास क्या थे ड्यूरिंग द सेकेंड सेंचुरी बी सी द साकास वर नॉमेटिक ट्राइब ऑफ सेंट्रल एशिया दे कंक्वायर लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ इंडो ग्रीक टेरिटरीज द साका रूरल कॉल्ड दम सेल्फ क्षत्रपथ They established their rule in the various part of India, like Takshila, Mathura, Nasik, and Ujjain. So, uh, Ujjain was the most powerful Shaka ruler who assumed their title as a Mahashatra. Let's understand the Indo. So let's understand the Indo Parthians. What is Indo Parthians? so by the first century ad the indo parthians also called a tribe in central asia occupied by bactria maus was the first parthian ruler in india who held swath valley and gandhar in the northern uh, northwestern india most powerful patlavas ruler is gondo prezenes the the palvas uh, the palvas rule was short lived it was the overthrown by the kushans let's understand the kushans what is kushans so the kushans was the uh, was the nomadic tribe of central asia ki tribe thi theek hai it was the branch of u g tribes and chinese turkistan so under the leadership of kujola kartvisa the, they left their home and captured bactria and parthia according to chinese uh, historian shushu macheni qui sang letter known as kushans marched into india and established their rule in kabul and kashmir so let's understand more about the chapter so let's understand kanishka the great administrator administrator kanishka administration kaisa tha let's understand it so the kanishka was able administrator he divided vast empire into several provinces which were ruled by trusted governor called kshatrapats they had independent military power matlab un kshatrapats ke paas apni independent military power hoti thi kanishka the great uh, patron of art and literature kanishka jo kya tha art and literature mein bahut famous tha his uh, his um, jo unki excellence thi jo philosopher the musician the poet the aur playwright ko karte the theek hai to वाशुमित्रा नागार्जुन अश्वघोष आर द फेमस बुद्धिस्ट राइटर ऑफ दिस टाइम ये सारे जो थे वो बुद्धिस्ट इनके टाइम के बहुत ही फेमस राइटर थे कनिष्का वॉज अ ग्रेट बिल्डर टू ही गेव लिबरल ग्रांड फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ मोनास्ट्रीज स्तूपास एंड मॉन्यूमेंट ही ब्यूटिफाई द सिटी ऑफ पेशावर मथुरा एंड सारनाथ विद अ नंबर ऑफ दिस स्ट्रक्चर the gandhar school of art also progressed under him he contributed a lot to development of madras school art to madras school ke jo art thi unhone usko bahut zyada develop kiya tha let's understand the kushans uh, influence on india kushans ka kya influence tha india mein theek hai usse hum log samajhte hain so uh, the gandhar school of art it was developed as a result of greek influencer of an indian art theek hai the school made image of buddha and buddhist tava which looked like a greek or greek gods the mathura school art mathura school art mein kya hai bahut hi fine art hai it flourished in mathura during the reign of kanishka it was purely indian in spirit as well as in its style image of buddha and buddhist tava were made in the style Difference, difference क्या क्या था उसमें The Madura School of Art was an Indian in spirit style, while the Gandhar School में क्या था Art was Indian in spirit, spirit but Greek in style. मतलब जो Madura का school था 
वो इंडियन स्प्रिट को लेके ओरिएंटेड था बट जो गांधार स्कूल था वो इंडियन स्प्रिट पे था लेकिन जो उसकी स्टाइल थी वो क्या थी ग्रीक थी इन मथुरा स्कूल आर्ट बुद्धा वॉज डिपेक्टेड विद अवन हेड लाइक एन इंडियन एसिटिक वाइल द गांधार स्कूल आर्ट पोर्टियाड बुद्धा विद द कर लाइक ग्रीक गॉड सिमिलरिटी क्या है दोनों स्कूल्स में लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड बोथ स्कूल मेड इमेजेस ऑफ बुद्धा एंड बुद्धिस्ट द क्लियर चीफ्स बोथ स्कूल आर यूज्ड रेड स्टोन्स मतलब इसमें मतलब रेड स्टोन के वो बने हुए हैं फॉर मेकिंग आइडेंस बोथ स्कूल फ्लरिश ड्यूरिंग द कुशान पीरियड मतलब कुशान पीरियड में दोनों ही स्कूल डेवलप हुए और फ्लरिश हुए लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड कुश कनिष्का एंड बुद्धिज्म सो कनिष्का कॉल्ड हिमसेल्फ द सन ऑफ गॉड जो कनिष्का थे वो अपने आप को क्या बोलते थे सन ऑफ गॉड बोलते थे ठीक है ही एम्बेरस बुद्धिज्म बुद्ध स्टेच्यू वर इंस्टॉल एट मेनी पब्लिक प्लेसेस कनिष्का डोनेटेड लार्ज सम ऑफ मनी फॉर द फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट monasteries he built a tower of peshawar which have been recently executed excavated he organized fourth buddhist council at kandalwana in kashmir and sent many chinese propagate buddhism so let's understand and also and also buddhism came into divide to 18 sects which were ultimately reorganized into two major sects called mahayana and hinayana kanishka was tolerant towards other religion, religion too let's understand the successor of kanishka so so kanishka was succeeded by several king including vashishka yuvishka and vasudeva who uh, who ruled till about 230 ad so during his re region uh, of vasudeva uh, mathura assumed greater importance than peshawar after his death kushan's empire declined and was confined to north west india only yes student let's understand the spread of buddhism north india to the central asia कैसे बुद्धिज्म सब जगह शॉर्ट टाइम में फैला था ठीक है ये हम लोग समझते हैं सो बुद्धिज्म स्प्रेड ऑल ओवर इंडिया विद इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट पीरियड द रिपब्लिक स्टेट ऑफ साकियस द वाजीज एंड मालयास एम्बेरस बुद्धिज्म ड्यूरिंग इन इज लाइफ ऑफ बुद्धा अंडर द अशोका कनिष्का बुद्धिज्म बिकेम अ स्टेट रीजन Ashoka organized third Buddhist council and uh, and uh, uh, and got the true Tripitaka compiled. He sent many Buddhist missionaries to Syria, Egypt, and many other countries. He sent his son Mahendra and daughter Sangamitra to Ceylon for the same purpose. Ashoka himself went to Central Asia in two thirty six BC. Spread Dhamma. Dhamma. He exercised it in Nepal too. Uh, Mahendra, the Greek ruler, the first century BC, embraced Buddhism under the guidance of Buddhist monk Naga Sena. Kanishka, which was uh devout uh, votary of buddhism so Buddh, uh, and he erected many buddhist viharas and monasteries it was during his reason and largely through the effort of buddhism was successfully introduced in the central and eastern asia let's understand more about it in the gupta age Buddhism continued to thrive Kashmir Gandhar and Afghanistan continued to be stronghold of Hinayan sect of Buddhism down to the 5th century AD at the time of Hyang uh, Hwinsang the Hinayan sect had attained great importance of Buddhism in flourishing condition up to the uh, end of the 17th century Buddhism was introduced in Korea by a Chinese monk in 372 AD from where it reached Japan 
this is the cycle of uh, buddhism so i am highlighting it buddhism was introduced in korea by a chinese monk in 372 ad 372 ad mein buddhism ka introduce korea mein hua tha chinese monk ke dwara from where it reached japan wahan se japan pahuncha 552 ad mein in indo china buddhism was already embarrassed before the 3rd century ad and tibet in 6 640 ad so buddhism uh, basically buddhism ka jo ex, buddhism sab jagah jo phaila time to time buddhism ne apna sab jagah pe ap, apne aap ko flourish kiya theek hai in afghanistan afghanistan used to be a part of india it included mauryan and kushans empire bamiyan was a famous center of indian culture afghanistan with several monastery and the tallest statue of buddhist uh, buddha so afghanistan mein bhi kya tha kyunki wo india ka part tha to bahut sare buddhism ke buddh ke kya the statue the theek hai aur bahut hi zyada afghanistan mein bhi uh, buddh dharm ka bodh dharm ka bola wala tha theek hai central asia mein kya tha let's understand so indian culture expanded beyond the himalaya himalayas in central asia land route between china and india passed through the central asia so the northern route to china passed the kashnagar and kara shau turfan and tramin basin while the southern route passed from kashagar through the yarkan and khotan so the two routes finally converged at tang huang and led to chinese turkestan so the whole region is a vast desert okay notable indian colonies were set up along the southern route of uh, kashagar yarkan khotan and and miran along the northern route at to lukia kuchi yenki and turfan so according to fayan indian were laying in this region in the early century of christian era and by the 5th century the whole asia central asia was completely indianized so uh, this is the way pura jo buddhism tha wo india mein phaila jagah jagah pe time time mein jo bhi raja aata gaya india mein uh, sabhi uh, jo unke uh, time tha usme unhone buddhism ko apne andar follow kiya aur buddhism ko india mein flourish kiya to yahi is chapter ka motive tha ki humne kis tarike se central asia mein buddhism ko phailaya kis tarike se hamare jo dur desh the the unse relation tha so this is all about chapter 11 we will study the chapter 12 in our next class thank you